T-O-X versus N-V. Five letters, two absolutely formidable teams, and another $100,000 in the bank for whichever one bags this next match. This, of course, is your loser bracket final. Winner goes, excuse me, loser goes home. Winner goes to the grand finals for another crack at Splice and half a million dollars. We are playing for the big bucks, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Richard Sims. Joining me for this one is David Walsh. Walshy, this is going to be an absolute bloodbath. Yeah, we've never seen Tox really handled in that fashion. So Envious are going to want to take advantage of the situation. They're going to want to kick them while they're down. You heard from Spartan earlier. He says a lot of these teams know how to bounce back after losses. It's not going to be as simple as that. They're not going to be as uh, as emotional of a squad. But at the same time, you have to take advantage of those times when you have them. It's I find it quite scary that this is the back-to-back -back two times world champions, and they were quite literally manhandled. They were they was dismantled by Splice like it was nothing. Like the. The level to which that team is now playing at has completely thrown the meta out of the window. They have taken Halo 5, taken it apart, changed the game, flipped it on his head. You have to ignore everything when you go up against them, guys. They are incredible. As you mentioned, though, Dave, can Envious take advantage? This, of course, is a Tox team that is down. It's beaten, but it's still Tox. Yes, it's still Tox. It's really tough to ever count them out. We've seen them drop to the loose bracket a couple times before, but they've always emerged out of there. They've always made it back to the grand finals. Can they do it one more time? Game number one, Strongholds on the rig. Slayer on Truth, CTF Fathom, Strongholds Empire, Slayer Plaza, CTF Truth, and Slayer Regret. That is your best of seven. Seven maps separating you between another hundred grand in the bank. That's a ridiculous <laughs> amount of money, Dev. It is absolutely phenomenal amount of money. One thing that stands out to me in those game types, though, is you see three very arena-like maps. You saw two truths in the form of CTF and Team Slayer, and you saw regrets. So that's going to bode well for whoever can take that very first one, because those are all going to play very similar. Wow. Whoever thought we'd be seeing Pistola back up at this you know, after kind of what happened with the old envious fallout when we look, obviously, there was a separation amongst that roster, kind of Pistola was, was left on his own. He went and rebuilt this team from the ground up. And now he's, he's on the biggest stage in the world. The first world championship, he wasn't anywhere to be seen. We didn't see him back in 2016. He then comes back, pulls second, and now he's, he's on top form once again. Boo Boo Doo Boo, Trippy, and Saiyan in the seat, joining him. Hooks are in the back there. It's a formidable force, but is it good enough to take down Tox Game in Royal 2, Snake Bite, Lethal, Frosty, Royal 1 in the back seat? <sighs> it's going to be a good game. There's, yeah. there's, there's no real other ways to kind of give you the level of tension and the level of hype that's going to be in this room when this series goes down. Pistol had to help put together this monster of a roster. I mean, Boo Dubu was fairly proven from the, the past events, seeing the success he had reached with Splice previously. But when you looked at kind of Sane and Trippy, they were known as good players, but they hadn't reached that top level of play exactly yet. So he kind of came up with this brand new roster, who rose from the ashes with all these players. And I remember talking to Pistola when I was back in Columbus. And I was like, Pistola, first off, you're a wizard. I don't know how old you are, how old you are in human years, so we won't go there. But uh, secondly, what do you what do you plan to accomplish in Halo? I mean, he's been competing. He's got to be one of the longest competitors right now. He's been playing since Halo 2 days. And he says he wants to go down and be known as one of the greatest Halo players of all time. He's already accomplished that. We just want to see how high he can get. It's pretty scary. He has accomplished that, but he doesn't have a world championship under his belt. Could this be it? Could be this the one? Tox versus Envy. Seattle, let me hear what you got down there. This is it. The loser bracket finals. Loser goes out, winner to the grands. Kicking it off, let's start this one, Dave. It's gonna be a good one. Pistola down bottom. Initial BR base going off straight away. We'll see Boo Boo Doo Boo grabbing that first camo. Can he get away with his life? Yes, he does. Pistola's there for the backup. 
I like the teamwork. Drop down, eliminate that player, and now he can move around and rotate. And that's the starting strat they've had to practice numerous times, just knowing, all right, I'm going to shoot this camera down here. I'm going to have this cover angle here. And so many times players have fallen into those traps where they just get picked off by that baited camel player. And boom, boom, boom. Now it's his camel, but I want to see him make some moves. Right now he's trying to fight this tower player, but I feel like he can do something else. So I'm not sure if this is the right play. The reason I do not agree with fighting that tower player there is he didn't have any teammates that could push off and finish off that kill. I suppose the saving grace to that one, Dave, is the fact that while he's been a bit of a nuisance, Frosty's, you know, firing off railgun bullets and wasting them. And that's two shots that we've seen so far. Yesterday, we saw what he could do with a railgun as he actually just pretty much got the overkill on his own with that weapon. Royal 2, though, has a message for himself. And that he's actually Royal 2 who has the rail. Excuse me, he's got scatter and rail. Now Boo Boo opts to make his mark. He jumps up. He takes the power weapons into the hands of Team Envious. And it's Team Envious who do have two positions here. Tox obviously want to transfer one back. I'm looking across the board. Where are the rest of the team? Frosty's with him here. Down at the bottom on the BR base, but he is forced back. That's a good push from Envious to at least push Royal 2 back and say, nope, this is mine. Yeah, I was just going to say, it feels like these slays are near even, and that was a great exchange in that uh, exact situation. But same time, too, I, I think Tox are still doing very well in this position. I mean, they're only down by four points, and I feel like they're they're about even slays, but inferior positioning. So I'd love to see how Tox are going to break out of this position. Right there is exactly how they're going to break out as Royal 2 hits those great shots on Trippy. Grabs the double, and he also knows someone else is creaming. Creeping around here, you can just see him now. Those grenades will come through. Next side, there is two players, I believe. I'm looking straight down this POV. Saying at least comes back, and then he does get answered by Royal 2. But these grenades, this is what's giving away the position, so he knows there's a guy creeping around this corner. He's got to be careful of it. Yeah, one thing that's quite odd is right now, Tox are very comfortable in this situation. Generally, when you have control of BR base slash Nest, teams are desperate to get out of there. They just want to push on out and get out as fast as possible. But Royal 2 seemed pretty calm. He's like, you know what? I'll chill over near BR base. I'll go over near Engine 2, and I'll let these players from Envious make some mistakes that I'll capitalize on. Still a nice cam before the stop. 15 to 26. A little bit of a lead here for Team Envious. They want to make sure they keep a track of Tox, because Tox are this kind of team that will happily just decide, all right, it's time to step it up a notch. It's time to put it into full swing, full gear. <gasps> and if they want to actually take over a map, they're just so damn good at it. But they've been doing it for many, many years now. They're so drilled at being able to just do the, the swing. And when the communication comes through, when the, when the call will come, the push will come in, and you just see a massive flood of players. There'll be another player below to kind of clean this one up, I would have thought. Boo Boo Dooba, though, sneaks around on the outskirts. He has the DMR. Frosty and Lethal with a kill of their own. Boo Boo now picks up the second one. He can go back down to basement. That's a big, big win for Envy. One thing that's interesting, I see Boo Boo as one of the players who actually picks up DMR slash BR and uses it a bit more than other players on the circuit. I feel like since those guns got some nerfs in the past, a lot of players kind of opted just to forcefully stay on Magnum. That way they get fully used to their shots there since they're using that for the rest of the game. Whereas Boo Boo, he feels comfortable in his flexibility. He says, I'm going to pick up this weapon, and I know it's going to give me advantages in some of these situations, and he knows how to use it to its fullest. Royal 2 picks up a double down in the kill feed. You can see that one. Pistola comes back onto him with the scan shot. What are the kills at the moment? Ooh, good God. 50 kills there. Oh, excuse me. No, that was no, the, that's the, that was the past one. one. Looking at the, the previous one. one here, completely ignore me while we're going off track off. 36 to 33. Ness will transfer into the hands of Envious, and they can continue to tick the points away. Fresh real gun is up, and look who's got it. Team Captain Snakebite opts to move down pipes, looking across from White Corner. One player does traverse back. The pistol's there. That should be an easy kill. Lethal comes through. PJ, easy to rock the camo there, so both power weapons in his hands, Dave. Such a deadly combo right here, and I want to see what he opts to go for. His team is down in Stronghold right now, so he looks like he does want to put some points on the board by starting to capture BR base, but I bet he will leave a little bit early. Nope, looks like he's going to capture his teammate and then revert on over and go towards Whitehall or something. So I want to see what he does. This is interesting because I feel like his first move would be getting some sort of high ground. Why wouldn't he go for Whitehall? That's one of the most powerful positions in this situation. One, two, three members of Envy. They are dead. They all hit the deck. And all of a sudden, we can just see now, Snakebite can convert this nest, and they can start to tick the points. That's a real gun as well, straight through there. BR, BR base does get turned back. But he has eyes on the prize. You know what? We've got a listening ready in the background. Let's jump on in and hear how the communication's going down with Tox Gaming. Top row alive. Yo, that's you, Shopping. Right oh, nice one guys. in top row, Trippy. 
And scatters. Nice, TJ. Top rail still top rail. Live, guys. Everyone live here. I can't see top rail. He's scattering. He's scattering. Two barrels. One above EP. He's scattering. He's scattering basement. Yeah. Come kill. Come kill. Come kill. I'm going basically, they're gonna spawn yeah, behind scatter, man. Trippy's a scatter, man. Scatter three. Oh, absolute! Yeah, just keep saying that. I can't kill scatter, guys. Two dead, two dead. We need to kill other guys. Yeah, yeah. Barrels, barrels, barrels. I might die to him. Yeah, scatter in my axe. He's weak. I did. Scatter, do not let them Yeah, watch out for Ness. He has a scatter as well. I got one set mason door and watch you too. I'm pushing right off. White corner, white corner and barrels, white corner and barrels. Okay, white corner. I have death camp basement right now. I killed white corners, another one white all going nest bridge. And connector and basement. Two basement, two basement. I'll sleep connector. We kill a guy, Ness, come kill a guy, Ness. He's one hit, Ness. No, DJ, go. Okay, new rail, guys. I'm gonna go for him. Bell should be up. I'm wasting, I'm wasting. 41 camo. 41. Where are they? Where are they? Open field. 41 guys. I'm gonna kill that camo. Go back there, bitch. Two dead, we have numbers. 41 camo. Top end, top end. Top end, top end. behind you, I think. I spawned camo. Who is getting camo at 41? I can, I can. Okay. Cuts, cuts. That guy's drug on that zero. 41, PJ. 41. Hold me, hold me. Nice, good job. I need help, guys. Left side, hold up. Inside ball. Need help, BR. I need help, BR. Help, lucky TJ. Hey, we have camo, guys. It's real. Real top snipe. Real top snipe. And BR. Nice help. Good job, guys. Can we get a nest or not? You guys just go barrel. You know what, Dave? One of the hardest things to do against Tox is actually take back this map from them. When they get set up, when they lock it down, and they're all just creeping around the back of the rail side, they have the power ups, they have the power weapons. Being able to rally back and actually take that from the hands of Tox, remove them from that position, and then take the lead once again, that's a big, big feat from Team Envious. Yeah, it's a massive feat, and there's no wonder why after listening to that communication. You heard how Royal One dictated his teammates around and had them move around the map and also not overcommit to power ups. He was asking, who wants this power up? And you heard him saying, Snake Bites get in it. It's like, all right, Snake Bites get in it. That means everyone else get in stronger positions, stay up high, cover this ground. They don't have those blunders that you see from other teams where maybe two players jump in towards camo and try to grab at the same time. Our hype level right now is not high enough. We do need to raise the sticks a little bit. However, this play, these two teams, it's so very slow paced, rather methodical, making sure every single move, every single push is needed at the right time. A single wrong push could cost them the game. Discipline is key, listening to your coach, know what's going on. There's two great coaches behind both of these teams in the form of Hoxha and Royal One. 76 to 73. Tiny bit of a lead here coming for Tox. This is, the, I think, pretty much the most they've had so far in this game. I mean, by a very little bit. It's such a small margin at this point. Six-point game is really anyone's game. And one of the scary parts here on Rig, though, is after a couple kills are acquired, you can easily transition that into a trip cap in certain situations. We're going to have to see what's going to happen here now that Snakebite has Railgun over at the top tower. You can see the bullets are coming through. Long haul. Spots one. Tries to go for it. Layer does not connect. I'm just seeing which side he's actually on. It looks like he's actually run to back rail. So he needs to be very, very careful because they do do a push from stairs. It could be rather problematic, but they managed to eliminate the camo guy. That's a great shot there from Snake. Mike Pistola down in the feed with the scatter as well. Oh, let's go. The charge at the, the last second. Does he get the kill? No, his teammate might actually do. Nice aggression, though, but Snake might answers back. Says, welcome to Fight Club. You want to take a chance at it? Crack on, my son, Royal 2, with the cluster look. Two for one grenade. The time is ticking. He keeps control of Ness, Dave. And that is going to be GG game one. Yeah, that's going to be GG. The one thing that's really impressive to me there during that, uh, you know, early game and end game was how Tox were able to hold that poor man setup, as T-squared would call it. They just held BR base and Nest, and that's usually like a very temporary setup. However, I want to say Tox held that setup for a good 20 to 30 points of their run. Bring you the kills up in a second and show you how that all went down. Four kills from Pist excuse me. Nope, that's completely wrong. 16 kills from Pistola and 17. 21 and 12 from Royal 2. Banging game from him alongside 16 assists, helping his teammates out. Trip is 6 and 15. But if you're going for the strongholds, then you can expect some kind of death like that. KDA here, minus 6.3. Damage done, who's topping that Royal 2 with a 14.3 KD, wouldn't expect anything less. Triple kill as well from Matt, we didn't actually catch that one on stream. Good stuff from him, leading the charge and kills. Yeah, great work there. Uh, damage dealt is usually the more significant stat to me. It just shows how much damage you're putting across the map. So rather than seeing those kills like from Trippy's end, I, I really wanted to see how much damage he had done. And it felt like he had a decent amount. I mean, he had 2,000, but when you looked at Royal 2's numbers, he had 3,100 something. And that's just so much across the map. He's essentially doing one and a half times as much as Trippy's doing. 
Well, we did say this could be a good series. That was a very close game. Certainly wasn't a blowout by any means necessary. Envious, they can come back from this one. It's not hard. They just need to tighten up a few things. Try and catch Tox on some of their worse maps, I want to say. But again, it's very hard when you're going up against this roster. It's it's quite scary, Dave. This one is think? the one I was talking about, though. This Truth game is so important because all you know, you have three games that are going to be very similar to this. Truth Team Slayer, Regret Team Slayer, and Truth Capture the Flag, all very similar. I mean, clearly, CTF is quite a bit different from Team Slayer, but in the end, these players' map awareness, the way they're going to be able to work together on these maps, are going to translate. Just going back to what I was saying, when we look at this roster, <laughs> it's not made a team change in several years. I mean, what does that actually say from, from a team's point of view? If you're not changing your members and you're trusting it so much, what does that do to the bigger thing? Well, in certain situations like this, could you could you repeat that one more time? When we're looking at, you know, when we talk about Tox, they literally, they've, they've never changed up. They've been the same team since 2016. They've stuck together. They've proved for it thick and thin. But now they're coming up, they've, they've kind of found a mark when we talk about splice. They're having problems and difficulties, but still there's no team change coming. Well, when you've been the top dog for so long, it's really tough to pinpoint that one change you need to make. I mean, we had a similar thing with Final Boss back in the day where Final Boss felt like we were having some troubles and they, they felt like I was the issue in that case and they felt like all right we'll, we'll switch up this one thing and right here it's really tough you look at this roster of tox and you say hey we had a a little uh, a couple runs where they've taken second place in tournaments your first inclination is you stay with that roster and i like the way that they've stayed with this but it's tough when you see them lose in the champion bracket finals like that i mean it was quite dominating fashion with 4-1 so when i'm thinking tox's mindset is going to this event they're saying all right we need to work on our close range game. There's been times where Splice are just charging on corners and getting 1v1 fights that they should not have gotten in the past. And so when I've been watching them recently during some of these games, I'm seeing Lethal or Frosty a lot faster to the punch. They've been sliding around corners. They've been not going just for melee trades, which I've seen them trade with Splice in so many situations. So I really do think they've kind of been working on the individual game, which is quite odd to say because uh, you think about these as being such individually skilled players. I think it's just working on those situations, though, because, yeah, they're close. They're good in mid range. They're good at long range. But those close range, uncomfortable vertical battles is where Splice thrives. And I feel like that was one of the biggest weaknesses that they've exposed in the Tox gameplay. The new meta, the young guns know how to play this and they play it to its finest. Good few set of kills there coming out of Saiyan. It has brought them back into this one. Keeping tip to toe, 13 to 11 now, still in favor of Tox. Frosty's creeping, he's got the camo as well. Tag Mag comes out, remember, you get a tighter spread with this one. It's also silent, so you're not going to be appearing on the radar. Look straight across to Bubba where he did get tanked up pretty hard. How will he play this one? Will he potentially, he's actually going to pre-grenade the window, which may push the player back if there's one in here. Pre-grenade again, so the scary thoughts. Wings went around the corner, his teammates there to get the kill. He gets the cleanup, doesn't stay alive. 17 to 12, five kill lead now there for Tox. Yeah, in certain situations when you get sniffed out with that camo there, you just have to lay down as much damage as possible. Some situations are inescapable. You get lit up in that position, and he opted just to lay down a couple shots, get a melee, and hope that his teammates were able to clean it up because they were closing in from the Carbine side of the map. Scary out there now, look at this. Boo Boo Doo Boo looks up to P3, he's got a player shooting him. Looks in front of bottom mid, he's got a player shooting him. Wum just drops down behind him. There's a player shooting him, his teammate, and the wiped out. Once again, they're all just been forced back into the death screen. They stole us POV, and you do know what? We've got a boys in blue listening, ready, and tanked up in the back. Let's dive on in and hear how the comms are going on the side of Team Envy. Oh, go, uh, nice. go car, go car together, go car together. Watch out for right. bubbles. Watch yeah, out I'm, I'm looking alright. I'm looking for one, guys. Car one on the side. On the side, the whole on the side. He's caught to me, game P3, guys. There's side P3. There's side P3. Go car one. There's side P3, guys. I'll see him. He's pink one. Yo, car slide, car slide, and car door. Stay alive, stay Car one, car one, roll two on the left. Lifting right now, weak. Chasing, chasing Joey, chasing Joey. Boop your street. 
Hey, Blue, P3, I can challenge you. Car, P2, P2 or something. I need help. Street. I'm in my car. Yeah, you might have one car. We can look at Blue. P2, 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 Window, 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 front blue or something. Front, front. Two at red, I mean. Front blue and car one, guys. Yep. Car one right now. It definitely mixed feelings there, Dave. We did it here at the start. You know, we've got this set up. We have map control. Let's do this. And then towards the end, a little bit of desperation. You know, oh, we're getting slayed again. We're off spawn. So definitely a, a, a mixed bag when we listen to the communication there on Envy. Yeah, it was quite an odd static setup because you saw them over at red side of pink and blue side of pink. But essentially, they're only controlling one quadrant of the map. I would love to see them hold maybe red or blue base and pink and then kind of, uh, you know, have some like trippy anchor and over on like blue side pink. But instead, they, they really only had that one quarter of the map and that's a really tough position to hold. And you saw as soon as they got a kill in that situation that they all got collapsed on pink side. I mean, they didn't really have any angles to shoot top center. They only had from the pink side. So that was really tough there. And I, I guess that's great capitalization from Envious' side, but I got to kind of, or sorry, capitalization from Tox's side. But I really got like, question envious is set up there halo 5 is not this static slow game you can't just expect to sit there grab a camo and then slowly push on out static slow game it's i mean it is as far from that as humanly possible it's a quick paced game and you got to keep up and this is why these young guns as we look to splice they're on top of that they know exactly what needs to be done at the right time these abilities they just absolutely abuse them to the max Say in, looking for someone to step up. It's going to be Frosty. He does poke out, and all of a sudden the call comes through. Look at that. He just says, "All right, we got one down at camo." Second player comes. This should be burnt. If he gets away with this, that will be impressive. Tucks his head in, manages to stay alive. That's a good win. And that was great trust in his teammate Pistola. He saw his teammate over at blue side pink, and he just instantly sprinted towards him, realizing that that player was just going to cover any angle. If anyone's shooting over at Saiyan, Pistola is going to punish them. Let's appreciate that this is now a two-kill game. Envy have really brought this one back. And I'll tell you what, oh, they don't know where he is. No, he, he missed that one right there, and he just realized. Also, Frosty got betrayed, I think, right there. I saw a, uh, I thought I saw something in kill feed right there, Frosty getting betrayed, so that is also a massive mishap from the talk side. And we're going to see this collapse now as Snakebite gets taken down, Lethal now gets taken down, Royal 2 gets taken down. It's a two-kill lead for Envious. That is a massive comeback. I think they were down by seven a minute ago, and you are right, David. We're 34, we're now down to 33, so a little bit of a miss kill comes through on the side of Tox. I like this position right here. Yeah. He's Explain basically why. saying, he's basically uh, challenging Tox to push up towards pink side. They're going to feel like it's too good to be true, but sometimes after you've exposed that side pink, you're like, you don't see any sort of resistance. You might continue up that street. So if anyone pushed out pink side right there, he basically set up an easy trap for an easy bait and switch with his teammate over at pink side. I think at the same time, too, he can revert over towards cars you're seeing right now. So it's just a position that he can help all around. Sitting on bottom mid as well, though, you have to. Believe in yourself. You have to have balls to sit down there because if anyone grenades you, you're instantly dead. You're out in the open. So sitting down there and having so much confidence, not only yourself, your individual shot, but your team to actually help and support you. Yeah, people aren't going to blindly nade there unless you're finally called out. So Saiyan recognized the situation. He realized that he snuck down there and these players on Tox aren't just going to haphazardly throw grenades and bomb Saiyan and hope to check on hit markers unless they've already heard it called out. Five kill lead here for Team Envious. They have done what I did think was impossible. It's incredible. Such a comeback now. Make that six. Big Battle going down with Pistola. He sees Camo, but he's all tanked up. Can the player above? Oh, he goes down. It all down to Frosty. Frosty versus Trippy. This is the Camo. Trippy may go for the burn. He does. Camo is off the map. Frosty looking now top mid with Lethal. Ops to move back for P2. Checking to see if anyone takes the Rampart down. They will be coming off the respawn. And Tox, they know this, they smell them. The grenade feeler markers will go out. Spots ahead over a bubble. No doubt the communication will come through. They'll tank up that player. Trade off in the kill feed. You can see down there, Royal 2 for Saiyan. Pistilla onto Frosty. All the action at the moment, though, Dave. It's all over on the cast side, and Lethal is taking advantage. Yeah, Lethal has to do a delicate balance right here between watching his own back from pink side red 
and also helping over at car side. You noticed a couple different times there where he was hesitating. He was thinking if he should push into red two and try to challenge whichever 1v1 happened to be there, or if he should revert back going into pink tower and just lay down cross map fire. But unfortunately, his teammates keep getting taken down over there, and this is something that doesn't really happen to Tox as much. They usually have so much trust in each other to stay alive when they're across the map. Two more kills. That's all the boys in blue need to take game number two and answer back to Team Tox. Boo Boo, he will get grenade and he is pushed back. He knows exactly where they are. The call out will come through. He's looking towards his teammates. He can see the shot. There's one downstairs. That should be another kill. I think there's someone else hiding down here. Here comes a collapse and there it is. Team Envious answer back 50 to 45 on Truth Team Slayer. More importantly, Dave, I think they were down by potentially maybe five, six, seven at one point. Yeah, it was about uh, six or seven kills. I think you're correct there. And so that's a massive comeback on Truth. Unlike other Team Slayer game types, this one doesn't have a sniper or rockets or something that you can get control of and roll. It doesn't have the same snowball potential as Regret. But in the end, we saw Envious coming back there, especially after they got pinched in over on pink side and lost that camo. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. Say an 18, 8, and 11. Plus seven bomb with eight assists coming out of him, Pistola and Boo Boo. Between them, 29 assists. Regardless of how negative you do, Dave, 29 assists is a big number between two players alone. Yeah, I mean, we got 44 assists for both those teams. So technically, Tox did have more of their kills assisted, but just incredible teamwork across the board from those squads. It's always good to see a team kind of just like shake it up and say, okay, we had a bit, you know, that game number one wasn't a blowout. We've seen blowouts here, especially, unfortunately, in the winner's final, but we've seen <laughs> blowouts for that. By no means, game number one was a blowout. And same for game number two. So this could be close. We could potentially have a second seven game. Oh, imagine if we get a game seven for this. I would love it. Oh, this is so, so good. Sending someone to grand finals in a game seven. Now, here's a map we haven't seen in a while. Capture the flag on Fathom. Dave, talk me through what you want to be seeing from these two disciplined teams. These two discipline squads, they're going to want to be getting control of top center when they get the opportunities. However, as soon as they're down in numbers, you're going to see a lot of these players and teams just revert back towards their base. They're going to camp in towards their engine side because they can basically ensure that they have the numbers advantage. Like you see in the movie 300, it's kind of like that. So when these players got charging through elbow or through the porch, they can hold the lines even though they're down in numbers. Speaking of holding the lines, Royal 2 down the scope. Light rifle in hand. He'll tag up a player twice. There'll be no shields waiting for the kill to come through, but it doesn't. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. This is interesting. This could be a big flank here. The grenades will go down, so now they know where he is. But he also has the information that they'll be chilling in the gen. Goes through the window. This is a very diverse route. They have no idea he's here, Dave. No, they just know there's an Ola somewhere around this position. He's going to eventually finish that one off. I'm not sure why he opted for the melee instead. Maybe he just wanted to hold on to his cloak a little bit better just in case there was somebody watching out of the Tox window for him. But overall, I mean, semi-effective camo. I mean, it's, its whole duration is now gone. Yet he's not in the base. He's not blocking spawns. He hasn't killed that Eng player. I really don't know what the exact play is here for Pistola because now he's down in numbers. And like I talked about before, that elbow area is a tough spot to be in because they can grenade it so easily. I suppose looking at it from, the, you know, from another angle, there's no point in just going in and pulling a flag when you've got camo because there were two players there. So as soon as he pulls that one, he has to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the guy over in the gen. Then when he does come out of the window, he has a player down in the pit waiting for him. The flag on the opposing side, though, Envy, it's on route. It's going through the pit. Pistola will be up here. He'll get the information. He should be shooting this player. Why is no one touching him? Why is he alive? Yeah, that's why I was talking about. I don't think that was a very effective camo. Pistola got taken out. Uh, as Pistola's over on that half of the map, he never once got in the Tox base. He never blocked those spawns inside and forced players from Tox to spawn over at Silo, which is much more vulnerable. So right there during that time, like I said, I think it was generally ineffective camo. Your ideal scenario is you get into the opposing base, you pick a kill or two, and you just stay alive long enough for your teammates to come help you. Or once you see the opportunity, you can run that flag out window and through pit. The call comes through. Frosty finds the one shot, tracks him down in pit. We'll take the real gun and move to the opposing side. Look at this. Communication so on point every single time. Frosty answers to every call. They will push him back. There's a player out in court. Yeah, they have to be careful and get control of him now. 
Will they get a touch on this flag? I think so. They do have a play around the corner. They've grabbed it. Now they get the reset. One, two players down. Thank you so much, Observers in the back. Catch this one and put it in the back of the net. Royal Two's there, off the respawn. Wham, bam, thank you, man. Two to zero, Tox Gaming. Yeah, but Tox gave up a lot of lives there to put that flag capture in. As we see Envious collapsing on the Tox base, they're gonna start pushing this flag across the map. Now, it's been a little too long to run this flag, so I think they're gonna have to get some slaying rounds. As you can see, already Tox on the counter grab, so way too late for them to try to push this one as fast as they can across the map. Right now, Boo Boo Dubu and his teammates are gonna just try to go for some slays. And this is kind of an unorthodox play. A lot of times, once you get the flag past the 50 yard line, usually aren't pushing it back, especially when you're down in numbers. Oh. Boo Boo clutching it up for the envious squad, though, and taking out Royal 2. Had he lost that fight, that could have been the flag recovered and the game over. This is a big kill. He needs to win this battle, which he does. Spree reversal and a perfect. What a time to nail him in the head. Will get the capture again so he can push forward with a flag. Will we see a return on the opposing side, though? Pistola, he's committing to it. He's forcing himself in. TJ, though, picks it up. Gets the reset, but as he kills him, he goes back out into the courtyard. I, I like that play, though. One thing you're going to do in certain situations, if a opposing team is inside your base and you have the flag in your base during that stalemate situation, toss it out into the courtyard. You now use that open area as advantage because for your teammates that spawn over in the garage or over near the silo, they can grenade that flag and watch it. Whereas when it's stuck in the window, you have to be in the base. Flag does go out, but no one's there to bait. Pistola looking on the back. Looks like the flag's gonna return. Real gun, that's a big commitment. Can he get away with his life? No, he cannot. Flag is returned indeed on the opposing side. They need to do the same. Excuse me, it hasn't been returned yet. Big kill though, top mid, saying he will fall with the camo. The bullets will come through just from the corner side of top mid. Trippy has no shield, so he'll just opt to drop that in case he falls. And this is that earlier situation I was talking about, Sims. As soon as Envious are down in numbers, you know how they just camp back in their base. You have these two players just watching porch, watching elbow, making sure nobody can sneak around in the courtyard and get in their window. But as soon as they have numbers again, they'll push out. Right there, Saiyan picked off, so I expect Boo Boo Dubu to revert back to defense, make sure nobody gets in the perimeter of the Envious base and has any sort of threat on his flag. Not just picked off, but that's the flag as well. So that's Frosty holding it and doing as much damage as the rest of the players. Checks bottom mid, he could see the initial bullets come through, jumps up, easy, clean kill, lethal's down. Make that two, they have numbers. They know that they're all far alive here for Envy, there's only two coming up, lethal's off the respawn. Unfortunately, he's getting battered already. The grenades will come through from the gen, one, two, Boo Boo with a big double. Where's this last player? He's outside, that should be a kill. There's the return, there's the capture, two to one, Envy. They go in again, dude. Yeah, one of the scariest things on Fathom is usually during those stalemates, it ends up either with both flags being recovered or a team potentially getting a double cap like we're seeing right now because if you have enough control on the map to get that flag recovery, you can get those kills and run that second flag. Scoops it up and there we go. In less than 20 seconds, we are all tied up. What a massive run to Team Envious to make something of this game. Snakebite knows the a player still lingering. It's going to be an easy kill. He'll probably play for numbers, though. Also, one small nuance, if you notice right there, Snakebite knew a player was hiding there over in the gen, and he shot that frag grenade just to see if he can get that radial explosion and keep that player's shields down. Enemies return their flag. Stalemate here. This is going to be so crucial. Six minutes on the clock. Royal 2 will get the free near. See if anyone wants to take a jump and a trip up to top mid, but it doesn't look like it. The call will come through. That player does stay alive. Royal 2's pushed back. They've now got numbers at least to kind of push up on this left-hand side. Team Captain Snake might grow. Oh, no, it, yes, it's burnt. He grabs the camo, but gets the blunt end of a railgun. So does a second player. Triple kill from Saiyan. Puts Tox back into the death screen, but they can't really do much because no one's in a position, Dave. Yeah, his teammates are collapsing in over near elbow side, and Sane decides to go block Silo and make sure nobody can sneak on out. And here comes the entire collapse. Four and dead! That's all four down. Now what Sane's play is going to be, he's going to go back to his base and make sure nobody spawns that Silo and can cut off this flag. They're all working together. The grenades are coming through. They've got the touch. They've dropped it. Can they get the return? Oh, my word. Envy. They rally back from 2-0 down to win the third map.
Hawks may have set their sights on the team above them known as Splice, but they need to also watch their backs from this Envious squad because they're hungry and they want to get into the Grand Finals. Dave, if you're on Final Boss now, talk to you about your mindset. If you were 2-0 up on Midi Flag and you just got 3 2 what does that do to your attitude and kind of the overall team feel? Well, one part that was so crucial there is just that double cap scenario. These players have played Fathom so many times and they're used to that, knowing how swingy that stalemate situation can be. But it's just a heartbreaker. I mean, a couple scenarios like that where they, they got double capped on and then at the end where Envious just execute a perfect collapse on the talk space. I mean, there's not much you can do, but I mean, I, you don't have any of those pep talk speeches like I talked about before. You just have to talk about small little tweaks and changes as you go into this next game saying, hey, as soon as one of our first deaths happen, we need to reel it back. Do not give them a four on two advantage. Wow, wow, wow. Seattle, what do you make think of that one then? That was an absolutely belting game. Thank you so much for joining us, all the people in the audience and everybody at home. It's a pleasure to have you with us for this elimination bracket final. Remember, whoever wins this, they go into the grand finals. They double their money to 200 k excuse me, 200 k The loser, well, it's not all lost, Dave. They've still got a triple digits in $100,000. Yes, that is an astounding amount of money. I mean, that's how much I won for uh, first place back in 2007. So to hear that third place is walking away with that, I am uh, incredibly envious. Excuse the pun. Initial OS will come from Pistola. They'll take a pit as well. His teammate's down, so he gets the call. He knows exactly where they'll be peeking around this fan side. Has to be careful. His teammates have fallen alive, so he knows they do not have the numbers. He might be able to even this one out, but his, his OS there is gone. No, that just got oh. melted. I love that maneuverability from Ole. He tried to juke out back towards the pit and then thrust outside. As soon as the player gets stuck with that sticky grenade, it's usually kind of like, hey, we're going down together here. Resound pit for Trippy. Looking back towards Fan. See if anyone wants to come off the respawn over red side. Both Ola's, bases have not been blue. captured. Actually, no, blue base is the only one that hasn't been captured yet. But uh, the starting mass strat for those that have been playing Empire at home is wondering, all right, if you spawn at your own base, why don't you capture that one right away? You really don't get much of an advantage of it. It, it gets you a trip cap or a double cap a little bit faster, but most teams opt to push to the center of the map, try to get control of those power-ups, the camo, the overshield, the pit, just a few more spots that are a bit more beneficial than getting your base slightly faster. Two players do double cap onto Pip. Boo Doo Boo attempts to make a stop on this one, but unfortunately will not be happening. In fact, excuse me, they did. So that grenade actually forced them both out and they got the instant reset. That's incredible. Snakebite knows there's people creeping below, so they have to be very, very careful here. He finds them both above him. They should collapse down. Oh my word. He takes one. <laughs> he takes two. What? Uh, I've watched National Geographic and you'll back a snake into a corner like that, Simsy. They poke the bear, they get the claws. New combo comes through, make that a third there for Snake Bite. He pushes on through, he'll tank this one up, he might use it as bait. Another easy kill at the moment, they're kind of leaving him unchecked, Dave. He's allowed to rotate around and do whatever he wants. Yeah, and these power-ups are coming at the exact same time, too, so this should be looking very good here for this Tox roster. Boo Dubu actually able to acquire that camo, whereas Tox were able to get the overshield. The way that this usually plays out is if they can spot the camo and get that overshield player somewhere nearby, you can fight a straight-up one-on-one fight, or you can at least use that, uh, that buffer damage from the overshield to, to absorb a lot of that damage. However, when Camo is able to roam around when the game gets a bit more chaotic, Camo is less effective, or Camo is more effective when it's more chaotic. Overshield is more effective when it slows down. Boobadoobo grabs himself a kill. They are now down in both in numbers and in time as well. I think it's about time we jump on into a listening with the boys in blue and see how things are going on the side of the communication for Team Envious. He's bottom mid. He's pushing. He's yeah, he's still there. Just two two kills. Two two kills. Two Blue curve one shot, blue curve one shot. Hold on, I'm coming. Frosty's, Frosty's one top pit. Frosty's one top pit. There's four shots. Two there, two there. One to right, to the right. Two to the right. Three low pit. Two more, two more low pit. One more, one more. Nice job, nice job. Guys, that's one red. That's one red. That's one red. Hold this, hold this. Help me outside. Somebody help me outside. Come outside. We're three out. We're three out for security. 
Top tower, Frosty. You gotta build your Top tower, baby, 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 please, baby, please. Blue VR, blue VR. Oh, I went back, Justin. I went back, Justin. I went back. I died, I died. You're crazy. Two red security. We got one. We got one security. Blue window, one guy. Red light, Tommy. We'll take red alley on Tommy. Or red flat. I don't know. Flat weak, Tommy. We have to get Tommy. We'll find you. That shit. Wait. Turbine outside, outside. Last two probably. I died, turbine. They got me. Well, turbine, Jilly. Blue window, Jilly. I died from blue window to high pit. High pit, high pit. One high pit, one high pit. High pit now. Hold on, put pressure. High pit, red side and low pit. Watch out, Blue Turbine. Watch out, watch out, Frosty. Two little bit, two little bit. Love you, Joey. Watch out, Turbine. Watch out, Turbine. Yeah, it's not this. Watch out. 45. When you get slayed. I'm gonna die. 45, guys. I'm gonna die. 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 I'm gonna
because at that point you just have to give up again you can't say we have to go through pit for another 10 or 15 seconds it's it's just over right there so huge reset from tox they now get the triple and even though Pistola is trying to stop the spleen over here, it might be too late. They really don't have any other option besides diving into the pit. It's too late to rotate all the way over to red base. This is all they can do. They can just pray and hope. Pistola might try and play for time with his life. The grenades will go down. But honestly, I think that's going to be it. Tox, they keep control of bottom mid. And they claim victory in game number four. We have a tied up series, ladies and gentlemen. Two apiece. This really could go all the way, Dave. These teams right now are absolutely so individually matched. It's unreal. Yeah, you thought you saw a lot of superheroes in the Avengers trailer. Look at these players. You got your screen right now. Just non-stop action from these players. They're all astounding. You watch any of their individual POVs, they pull off ridiculous plays every single time. 59 kills to 63. Almost even Steven, only a four kill margin. 10 assists, 12 assists. Coming out of Snakebite and Lethal, 22 combined, 17, 19 from Frosty, 14, 10 from Royal 2. But again, it's not necessarily all about those kills and deaths. It's about the points in objective. 100 to 65, very convincingly there, I must say. You know. Yeah, convincing scoreline, but slave wise it was only a four kill difference. It was 63 to 59 in favor of Tox, but a four kill difference, 35 points more on the board than Strongholds, that's an uh, incredible objective efficiency. And that's usually how it goes on Strongholds, is once you get control of the Strongholds and you trade in kills, the other team doesn't have enough resources on the map to cap those back. And so even though you're going even in slays, you actually need to go ahead in slays in order to get those Strongholds back. What a series. There's, there's, no, there's no other way to describe how incredible this is. Remember, this is for a shot at Splice. This is for another, pretty much another life, another chance to take home half a million dollars. This game alone will double the money. They'll get 200 grand. I mean, like we said before, even if you lose it, still 100 grand, still, still decent <laughs> money. But beating the next team in front of you beyond this in the grand finals, that's half a million dollars. Ridiculous numbers on the line for Halo Esports. And I can't thank you all enough for joining us. It's an absolute pleasure to be bringing you this matchup. My name is Sims. This is Walshy. If you can do us all a favor, grab your phones, grab your computers, do whatever. Tweet the stream, twitch.tv forward slash Halo. Use that hashtag Halo WC. Tell your mum, your dad, your nan, your dog. Your dog might like Halo. Who, who knows? Animals enjoy video games. <laughs> my cat watches me play various <laughs> games all the time from across my shoulder. But we want to get some big numbers because there's a lot on the line. There's a lot of stories. There's a lot of there's a lot of history behind Halo, man, and these players that are up on stage right now, there's so many storylines and like, Tox are trying to set a dynasty. Pistola, as you mentioned, I know you said he wanted to do it himself, but I think he's already kind of set his own dynasty. He's already set his own storyline from what he's been doing for many years, Dave. Yeah, I mean, in, in my eyes, uh, Tox have kind of already checked that box in my eyes. They, they've done so well through through Halo 5, they, they're back-to-back -back world champions, 2016 world champions, 2017 world champions. They're not even out yet. They may be 2018 world champions. So that's that classifies a, as a dynasty in, in my dictionary. Um, but yeah, the Pistola, everyone has their own different storyline they're trying to fulfill here. I mean, Ola has yet to get kind of that world title. I mean, even in 2012 when he fell short to ace in the 1v1 tournament, He's always fallen just short there when it's on the national or world line. Apologies for a couple of uh, couple of mistakes during my cast as well. I've, I've had something stuck in me throat for the last few games. It's absolutely killing me. So a <laughs> couple of uh, couple of misses from my end. So I do apologize. But for now, we'll take a quick look at the grand finals bracket to show you exactly how we are leading up to this match on your screens right now. Splice versus Envy, obviously we saw 4-2 earlier on. Reciprocity, 2-4 to Tox. Splice and Tox, the hot 4-1, which is just insane to see, to be honest with you. On the opposing side, the same is Reciprocity and Team Envious, that nail-biter of a game number seven going in favor of Team Envious, and now we are here. Tox versus Envy, 2-2, all tied up in the series. Three more maps to go, and the winner they're going to be doubling the money and they're going to go against Splice for half a million dollars. Let's talk about this. Let's bring the uh, the map pool up on screen and show you guys this next map, this game number five that we're going to be seeing. And we can have a little bit of a conversation further down. We think this one will be playing out. I believe it's going to be a Plaza Slayer, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we'll have to get that one pulled up and check in just a moment. But uh, I do remember, I want to say six and seven, I think, were 
uh, there is a regret, and there is a truth flag in there somewhere. So we do have a truth flag as being one of our next upcoming objectives, which uh, if you're going by the history of the recency bias, you, you did see Envious win the truth team Slayer. So even though objective plays quite different Slayer, I do kind of favor Envious in that one. I mean, we did see them come together and pull it back in that Fathom CTF. But you were correct, Sims. I do look at the, I am looking at the screen right now and seeing Plaza Slayer being this next one. And this one plays quite different from a couple of these other games we're going to be seeing soon. All right, let's see if my voice can hold up because this is going to be hype. There's a lot of people watching at home. I want everybody in Seattle now to put your hands in the air. Make some noise! This is game number five. And what an elimination finals we are seeing on screen right now. Plaza Slayer. Could this be the tipping point for one of these two teams? Could this set the runway to win two maps back to back? Dave, give me your thoughts. It's such a comforting feeling when you can take that lead in the series. Anytime you're tied, whether it's 1-1 one, one, or 2-2 two, two here in this best of seven, you just want to get that comforting zone just going, hey, we now don't need to panic during this last game. Just that mindset sets in, sort of like the, the name Tox itself. It's kind of like it it's the way you're like a toxin like your team starts to lose confidence you start to you start to see symptoms like panic as that sets in when you're down in a series so whoever wins this game is primed up to take away the series i think this kind of says volumes about the bigger picture of halo 5 yes we have seen splice come along flip the game on its head and do things that we never thought possible but that's only elevated everyone else around them, Dave. Everyone else has stepped up to the plate. I mean, look at this. 2-2 two, two for Envious. In the previous one, we had Reciprocity in a game number seven versus Ven Envious. Every single team now is playing the most peak Halo 5 of their careers. Yes, I, I still classify some of these teams in different tiers where I would look at, like, Tox and Splice in the, the very top tier. I would put Envious and Reciprocity in that second tier, and then you would kind of go down from there from, like, the fifth to eighth placings through those tiers. But those tiers can seep into each other as we've seen before they put such close matches against each other and there isn't that same gap that used to exist here in halo 5 these teams have just studied so much and gotten so much better I'll tell you what that's exactly what we're seeing right now seven to four on your screens the man the myth the legend mr pistola aka the wizard what kind of wizardry stuff why, why i explained to, to new obviously new viewers and stuff we have the go of, of, t, of, of you know t2's got his own name the t2 combo we've seen ogre 2 who's now the go why do you call this man the the wizard, the, the wizard he just pulls off things that should not be possible uh one way that bravo described it before is uh if you go by the physics form of the path of least resistance when it comes to like electricity and voltage Pistola has that built into him somehow within Halo. Anytime he gets in a sticky situation, someone starts shooting him, he somehow has it mapped out in his head that, all right, I can escape this way, I can jump back here, I can thrust this way, just like he dodges that grenade, and live just that little bit longer. Buy his teammates some time to help him out. He just does wizard things all day long. Doobie -doo -boo. Fresh OS, this will give them a nice bit of ground coverage here if he can get some kills, finds one, finds a second as well, so that's two people, no shields whatsoever, all tanked up. He's looking for them. They may potentially have pushed back through Hotel, checking driveway as well because the call did come through, but he's got to be careful. New combos there, two players, they slaughter him. He was looking for a flank right there over in blue. He knew there was a couple players, he saw a gap and an opportunity uh, assuming from hotel side wasn't being watched, so he decided to go for it, and because of that, that now gave the opportunity for Tox. So sometimes Tox and Envious, they're gonna step these plays where it's like, all right, we're in a comfortable position. Let's see if someone else tries to get a flank or tries to make a move, and that's exactly what happened right there as Boo Boo Doo Boo tried to be the aggressor in that situation. Tox obviously trying to get a hold of the sniper rifle, but great work there from Envy to at least delay them. They came across from the opposing side through Cafe, but he has been taken down. They're now collapsing. Ooh. Lethal's fallen, so that's a big double coming out of Pistola. 12 to 16. Bang. See you later, Boo Boo. Looking at glass side, now he knows. <laughs> that person just ops away. They're like, all right, I see you. You, you can have this one. It's sort of like when you're, you're mean mugging someone on, or not mean mugging someone on the street, but you, you start to make eye contact with someone when you're on the street uh, driving your car, and they're just like, all right, well, I don't want to give someone the wrong look. I'm not sure if you live in a bad neighborhood, Sims, but I've had to do that before. Yeah, it's, Just look away right away, and that's exactly what he did is he backed away from that sniper. <laughs> it's scary, though, isn't it? When you just look through a window, it's like, hello, you know, I'm, I'm happily going to just knock your face off if you come around the corner. Wasn't looking at you, my man. I was just looking at my phone. I'm just gonna just look this way. Second time now, Boo Boo's lost his face. 
Snake is going to opt to try and run away with this one. He will work around the corner. It's a little bit unorthodox because, generally speaking, you might think he's backed off to Cafe. The Cafe is locked down, though. Two players are there. Tries to go with a fadeaway no scope. Two bullets left. Doesn't really matter because he's already done enough damage. Tanks him up with one. Go on, spin around the no scope. Him. Do it. He will fall, so there'll be one bullet left in the chamber. That's pretty much a dead sniper. You're not going to go challenge him for that anytime no, soon. No, it's not worthwhile risking your life. In fact, uh, Envious aren't even certain about that one. They, they've known a lot of ammo has been used, so they might not even go look for that weapon. And if they do, they're going to be severely disappointed as they only find one bullet in the chamber. Saiyan goes for the support, but he does get stuck. Pistola, easy cleanup for him. 17 to 22. Snakebite finds his single bullet. Can he find a face, though? That's the bigger question. Frosty needs a little bit of help. No, he doesn't, because he's already got a kill. Looks over the shoulder. Thrusting left, thrusting right. Here comes the push from several players, though. They're all working together in Frank. No wonder they've moved, Dave. The entire flank from poster side has just come through. They've been pressured to move. Yeah, they're still going to rotate, even though they only have one bullet from the sniper. Most times you'll see these teams rotate, especially when they have a full sniper. But even when they have this one bullet, they're going to say, well, we don't want to get pushed in this uncomfortable situation. So they're gonna rotate over towards blue, try to back down, create some distance here. And one thing that is working in Toxic's favor right now is the sniper. Even if they get this one kill, Envious, they don't have a count on those bullets. They're gonna hear that shot come out and say, well, do we charge out now? Do we potentially give another free kill? And this could prime up Tox for this new and upcoming sniper, which oh. comes up at the six minute mark. For those new to watching our stream, uh, Sniper comes up every three minutes on the dot. So each game being 12 minutes long, they're going to come up at like the nine minute mark, the six minute mark, and the three minute mark. 24 to 26, the trade comes through, but still down by two. Six minutes to do this. Everything to play for. He gets the hit markers so he knows where the players are. He'll be able to walk over this one and just reload his Sniper. He'll instantly go into it. They do push it back, but it's only in a better position because he can just run over, slide, and get out of danger. Oh, ground pound down. Bumps up again. He's got his teammate to actually help him out. They're going to look straight across at Cafe because they know this is where they should be, in theory, coming from. This is interesting Interesting as well. Like, that situation, they could have even either given that sniper to Royal 2 or to Snakebite. In fact, it was actually more advantageous to give to Royal 2 since he wouldn't have to reload the weapon since he wasn't picking up uh, ammo count from uh, Snakebite's POV but they're trusting this one in their team captain. They feel like Snakebite can go clutch. He must be feeling it. He must have been calling for that weapon because, like I said, two players right there, equidistant from the weapon, they gave it to Snakebite. It's pretty scary how anybody on this team can pick up a sniper and just bury people. Like Frosty, Snakebite, even Lethal we've seen go off. In the past, goes for the quick scope. There's two players there. You gotta check driveway. They're actually gonna push on here. That grenade's gonna not do any damage at all, but he misses the quick scope. And Bistola, if he's got a grenade, he'll punish it. He does fall. Now that sniper, I didn't see how many bullets it had left, will transfer over to Envy. Should they make their way across? Royal 2's downstairs. He's all tanked up. They're not going to push it, which is fine. Snakebite's there as well. He's tanked up. Boo Boo comes in. There's one kill. Oh, dear. Ola's got three bullets. Goes for the quick. Trippy's there to see it through, though, at least. Scoops it on one. Go for the no scope son, and hit it. No, he doesn't. He was lined up, but he held back for a second. He sees his teammate falls, and now he's going to watch this door. He'll be the anchor. If they do the push, he could hit the body. His teammates there also to help. They see them dropping. They're coming off the respawn over on the sniper side, Dave. Yeah, he watched that door momentarily over in yard side, but his teammate's death screen was still able to watch the area. That's why you were able to see Pistola look away and not be concerned about getting flanked there instantly. It's all because of that death screen and that communication within their team. Four minutes left, Dave. They've got a seven kill lead. When you look at the time, that starts to become your enemy rather than the actual enemy themselves. What does it do to your mindset and to your team when you just see that everything's kind of coming close? You look at it more as how many swing potential opportunities do you have. And swings usually happen based around the power-ups and the power weapons. So Envious got to be feeling really calm right now, especially getting this overshield. I want to see Envious actually charge over and use this to its fullest extent. So let's go to a listen with Envious and see how they're going to use these power weapons and power-ups to their advantage. Hello, are you guys? Probably. Oh, oh, go this guy I am. I am. Yeah, he's pushing behind me, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One time in, one time in. He's that train right now. I'm getting killed from flowers, flowers too. I'm not getting flowers. You turn, you turn, Joey. Flowers right now. Flowers, Joey. Flowers, Joey. Watch out, you turn. Watch out, you turn. Yo, keep snipe. Flowers, guys. Yeah, snipe, snipe, keep snipe. Watch your, watch your flowers, Joey. Right now. Go to S1. I'm on snipe. I am on snipe. I will get this. All right, but just need help. Glass, glass, glass. Oh, glass. Two shot. 
Yeah, Alar, last two shots. Frosty. Watch out for flowers. Alar, Alar. I have a sniper. Light, oh, right now, we killing you, Soda. Loop. Watch out, watch out, Loop. Here, here. I'm gonna challenge right now. Watch out. Frosty's Loop. I might die, I might die. I'm nading, I'm nading glass for you. Okay, last one shot, please. nice nade. You have a sniper, guys. So have a sniper. I have a sniper. Loop on me, I know, I know. I'm gonna, I'm weak, I need help at Loop. Loop, still sitting there, Loop. I'm gonna die. Is it Loop? Three Loop, three Loop, three Loop. They're pushing Soda now. They gotta watch Three pushing Soda right now. Yep, three there. I got one. Nice, you Luke challenge me, Luke challenge me. I'm, going, I'm pushing out the yard, I'm rotating. Jesse, run for our door. I hear you. Jesse, I'm watching on dip. Guys, watch over me, watch over me. I'm bottom middle, bottom Just checking corners just in case. Jesse, get up here. Top middle. Top middle right now. And you win. Chuck, you one shot, you one shot. Chuck, one shot. Bottom dip, bottom dip, one shot. Bottom dip, one shot. Bottom dip, Jesse. Bottom dip, I can't, can't. Jesse, I can't. Frosty. Hey, challenging. One shot, one shot. Blue window, blue window, guys. Bottom dip, bottom dip, roll two. Bottom dip, roll two. There's a guy weak, Chuck. Blue Chuck right now. S4 on me somewhere. He's definitely here at S on me, guys. Hey, you. Top middle, top nest, top mid nest. Oh, shit. Glass, glass on me. I'm here at Soda right now. Stay alive. Trying to. Glass that, glass that. Soda, Soda, Soda. Guys, posters. In yard ledge. One's in yard. Where's that? Three more kills. Make that two. Shake of the head. Boo Boo says no. Not today, Frosty. That's a taste of your own medicine, my son. And they're going to look this one through. You'd have to say, David, you're a betting man. This is all but done. Potentially, the OS did go in the hands of Tox. Yes, he did snake by. He picked that one up. He did get a little bit damaged, though. Only a tiny bit creeping around. One more kill will seal the deal here for Team Envy. Yeah, it's basically over. We used to call this strategy back in the day, charge because you can't lose because they had so much room for error in that situation. And you do see Envy has closed that one out with the 50th and final kill. Wow. <laughs> so let's kind of put this one into perspective now. Your two-time back-to-back reigning world champions need to win two maps back to back if they want to make the grand final. If Team Envious wins this next one, they go out in third place and Envy, they go up against Splice. Two completely different play styles as well. You notice how much slower these games have been in pace because of Envious just slowing that down a bit. Seems like Tox and Envy are, are a bit more comfortable playing that slower play style with setups and pushing out together, whereas Splice just like that nonstop action. They like to isolate those 1v1s. They like it to be chaotic. So I'm not sure exactly who this one favors, but we are going into a truth capture flag. It's a, it's a game type and game mode that all these players are extremely familiar with. So Who this knows? is anyone's game, but if anyone can do this, it is Tox. One thing to keep in mind, though, if we do somehow go to game seven, this was the game mode Regret Team Slayer, the one that they had lost to evil geniuses back in the day. When they first made this roster, the very first tournament that these four players you see on your screen right now, they lost an X Games gold medal on Regret Team Slayer, which would be game number seven here, if Tox is able to extend the series. Tony Lethal Campbell's favorite game type. That was, <laughs> do you remember, that was a wild, that was back at MLG as well. Yes. Yep. So this would be the oh, second Aspen. time we'd be going back to that at MLG. Huge shout out right there to uh, Lawrence Alper right there. I've, uh, he flew all the way from Taiwan to come wow. out here to the Halo World Championships. Uh, when I did a few tours, uh, some, some promotional tours out in Southeast Asia, like where I'd go to Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Singapore, uh, Lawrence Alper is a super fan. I mean, he came out every single time I was out in Taiwan to meet up to take some pictures, just to talk Halo. So it's incredible that he's able to come out here to the 2018 Halo World Championship and watch this live. And that goes for every single person out in that audience. Scream until your lungs come out because this could be it. Envy need one more map to make it to a grand finals for a second time round. Snakebite, initial camo, checks top mid. One player there creeping around, the grenade goes down. Lethal finds the target. Royal 2 will assist instantly, Dave. No messing around. There's already a flag being moved. Yes, they already have this so far, but looks like they have to acquire a few more kills because Envious have a plan of their own as they're moving their flag along the carbine side of the map, Sims. Sticking down in the bubble. Jesse, AKA Boo Boo, backing off for a second. Snake bite on the defensive. Finds one. Can he turn two because he knows where this player is? More importantly, he's got the camo here, Dave, so he could. If he gets inside the base, he could get the flank. Now his position's been given away. He's getting shot. 
And that's an unfortunate one. That was a huge melee from Sane because if Sane did not get that melee off, Snakebite could have gone more on the offensive, gone all the way towards that bubble or towards blue too. But since that melee got off, it put a pause on the Snakebite's plans. Looking straight in the bubble. You can see the grenades are inside P2. He spots one player. I probably expect him to pull this flag back just a little bit. You don't want to be dying there out in the open. More than likely, you can just see the tip of the flag waving away there up inside the top window. So they're giving away his position at least, but it doesn't really matter too much. He's got a player in P2. He's got a player in the window. He will tag him, so he'll give away his vision for a little few seconds. Yeah, older Halos, you would actually try to hide the flag a bit more because your your weapon wouldn't be as effective across the map. Whereas now, these players want to stick close to their teammates. They want to see how much damage they can lay across the map with that flag carry. So right there, that player all the way over on Toxic's side of the map was happy to exchange damage with Sane. He just wants to lay down some damage that he can hide right there, that flag peeking out through the attic again. So we have to see what Sane decides to go for. And this is awesome of Sane. He didn't take the bait. He did not just run around the uh -oh. corner assuming it was going to be uh -oh. one one because it would not have been a one-on-one. -on -one. There would have been at least two Tox members in the base. So he tries to help his teammate over at the pink side of the map. Royal 2 does a fair bit of damage, but there's no other player there to actually help him out. Envy will be able... Oh, that's a belting grenade. Look at him. No fear. Saiyan still with absolutely zero shields. Forces himself out. Dropping to the lower base here for Tox. There's two players. Ola with the camo. Gonna opt to just kind of play defensively for a little bit of a while. There's no point in dying instantly with this, Dave. No, he's gonna oscillate back and forth. It depends on the situation. As soon as they have numbers, he's gonna push forward and try to collapse in. As soon as one of his teammates dies, though, he's gonna back up and see if he can catch any of these Tox members overextending. Possibly get one of them back. And right there, he did find one of his players in his bubble. He's gonna take this one on one with Lethal. Lethal backs him down all the way under the bubble. Scary stuff. Saiyan still, he's still not dead. Lethal's still creeping. That grenade should kill. He doesn't. Lethal's just stalling for time here. He's playing Ring Around the Roses. Look at this. <laughs> Cue the Benny Hill music as Lethal <laughs> doing Ring Around the Rosie in the bubble. That was a great job by Lethal just buying so much time. That's four or five seconds that teammates could have either came and helped them or they could use that time to buy for position. But I'm looking over here on our screen and we're just seeing members of Tox stuck in their base. I'm not sure what they're doing right now. 13 to 12 currently in kills, so very passive game. These guys know exactly how much is on the line. Lethal grabs himself a double. Now we'll move through P2. Traverse round, maybe try and get eyes on the prize. Look towards the flag. The grenade goes in, doesn't find the target. He'll pre nade below the base, see if he can grab any spawners coming off the bat. Royal 2 with a perfect onto Trippy. 4 to 3 here for the teams that are up. Trippy will be spawning on the opposing side inside the bubble, so they'll have the number read well. Depends where the rest of the team are for Tox. Can they get a collapse here? Well, what, right now, since they cannot just force a push in over near pink side, Lethal's is going to hold this side down. Eventually, the next position they want to take or acquire is going to be that bubble. At that point, Envious have no options. They either have to push out pink side or car side at a disadvantage. Even right now, Boo Boo Dubu is in a spot he does not want to be because of this pinch coming in from Tox. World 2 is heading in. But he does get stepped out. Nice kill. Lethal with the perfect. Pistol is there. Does he have support though? Where's the rest of his team? He's creeping down low. You see the kill comes through. Pistol will fall. This could be the return. The pincer comes in. One member, two members. He's thrown it out. That's where they're going to be spawning. Look how calm Lethal. he is. Look at how calm he is. He's not just instantly diving on that recovery. They're not going to somehow give up two deaths there. In fact, they're going to set themselves up in a position for a double cap. This is what happened to them earlier on Fathom, and they're returning the favor to Envious. Frosty, he's there to scoop it up. Lethal will fall, but the work he's already done. The grenade comes through. PJ's there to pick it up. Frosty's running this one. It could be back to back from no caps to two seven minutes on the clock now i do need to back up for a second because earlier on we did see two flags up them losing three in a row so it's not over yet the job's not done but they're running again dave they want this more than anything they're just keeping that pressure up right there if snake fight had not taken that melee in that fight he could have gotten that flag a little bit further one thing that's really impressive from the Splice Squad when I've seen them playing before is they seem to know when they should be going in for a melee trade and when they should be backing down. It seems like that's something that Splice does better than most of these other squads. They'll pick up two, but he knows they're going to be here. Can he get that any further look at this? Two players just jump on drop, but Trippy, Frosty's running. There's two players in there, though. 
Oh, Saiyan, he gets the pull, he throws it out at least so he can stall for time. And this is the situation, since the flags are all the way over on the top side of the map, that they can just try to go kill for kill. That was a huge recovery for Envious, though. They are keeping this game still alive. It's not going to be game number seven yet, based on that flag touch and return. Nice work. Stay in this one. Looking across at Lethal's POV, he gets the return, and now he heads towards Pistola. Tries to fall back to his teammates and acts for help. Lethal says nope, denies him that one. Royal 2 with a kill of his own, and they're going to be spawning in bubble. He knows where they are. Yes, he knows where they are, but he has to get up high as fast as possible because these players are going to be charging over towards his bubble and his car side, so Lethal has to be somewhere where he can be effective. Snakebite has a camo slash flag run. I'm not sure if he's going to ground pound this in or go straight for it. He does! He goes straight for the cap and gets that third and final flag. Holy smokes. Game seven <laughs> for elimination finals. If you're a Halo fan, if you're an esports fan, you wouldn't want this any other way. It goes all the way down to the wire. One more map. Who's it gonna be? Tox or Envy? Four and 12 coming out of Saiyan, not a belting game from him. On the opposing side, though, Royal 2 doing Royal 2 things. 10.0 KDA. 14 kills, 7 deaths. 42 to 25. I mean, that's pretty big. They heavily got, outslayed. Em, yeah, they got hammered. That when you when you're getting kind of all right. Let's talk a little bit more about truth, so to speak. When you're getting slayed so so much, and you kind of been forced back into the base. How, how do you escape that? What, what's... Do you go low and try and just break out a different way? <laughs> you have a few main options. Uh, ideally, if there's any easy way to get control of pink or bubble, assuming the other team hasn't taken either of those positions yet, you acquire those instantly. That way you have some cross-map fire. Or, sorry, cross-fire across the map for when players are in front of your base or, or uh, going around your base. However, if that doesn't seem to be available, Someone just has to clutch it up. Someone has to get a kill in those positions. You don't really have re really good flanking options. You can't just push straight out front of your base. You can't go out under to pink side. Those are going to be some free deaths. So someone just has to clutch up, hit some shots, and hit a good grenade. Rock and roll. Let's get this show on the re road. Regret TS. Ironically, one team will be regretting this after it's all said and done. 3-3 all joined up. Guys, if you are just joining us fresh, welcome. This is the Madhouse right now. Game number seven for a shot at the grand finals and half a million dollars on the line. Snakebite with the initial OS. It was delayed for a few seconds while both teams kind of felt their... Who was going to go where and who was going to drop down. Obviously, no team really wants to just beeline to bottom mid and get grenaded out. It's better to feel it out the situation, see who was going to get this, but ultimately... It was Snakebite to grab the first one. 5-5, five, five, Dave, all drawn up. All drawn up, but like we said, that overshield, it seems like you should have given a bigger advantage to Tox. Doesn't seem to be the case. I'm seeing a lot of members down low in these situations, just trying to get away, trying to scurry away in any chance they get. Looks like Frosty's on the flank, though, as Snakebite was distracting that player over at pink side of red base. Perfect kill comes through. Snakebite, team captain, team leader. Fan favorite as well, the grenade goes down, seeing if anybody is underneath the rampart. Doesn't look like it unless this second finds a hit marker, which he doesn't. So now he knows he has free reign to run the tunnels, Dave. Yeah, knows he, he knows he can run the tunnels, but this feels like a individual flank in this situation. I'm not sure where he's going to get this help from. Now these players from Envious are going to know he's down there. They tried to collapse, but it looks like it works out. Frosty and Royal 2 all up in your kill feed. That's all four members down for Envious. We're going to see what they can do with the spawn trap here. They know they're going to spawn at red. And look at them collapse. Oh, back-to-back -back double kills in the kill feed you called it perfectly two down two down all four dead and this is just continuing through 10 kill lead in a matter of minutes Dave this is tough to come back from one thing that can help envious though is if they're able to acquire a couple kills and get control of this overshield overshield's gonna be up in a few seconds I'll see you grab this one again it was delayed off the stat PJ goes to step up for this plate snake bite falls well, look at it, it's Frosty steps in. Did he get it stolen? He did! I think that was a steal. It was Boo Boo who just swept in. Took it from them, and now they are down by eight. 
They need to put this to good use, Dave. You can't be standing around doing nothing. I bet that Tox player even saw the pickup option on his screen as Boo Boo just snagged that away. He needs to make some work with this, though. Now, he's not just going to single-handedly get all these kills himself. What he's hoping to do, though, is get a few kills and get Tox in a spawn trap. This map is very snowball -y. Even though there aren't really any power weapons, there is the Plasma Caster, but there really aren't any strong power weapons that are going to change the tie of this battle. Instead, you're going to worry about numbers. When you get two to four members down on the other team, you want to just go back and forth. Get them spawned at blue, kill them at blue. Then get them spawned at red and kill them at red. A little bit unfortunate there. You did see he did actually grenade his own teammate. One, two, three. Triples there. And he will get them a few more kills on the board, but Tox, they're still answering back and firing on all cylinders here. 26 to 17. Seems like a couple of the Tox members didn't see him there at first. I wonder if it's so hard to call out his name because Boo Boo Doo Boo has so many syllables in it. By the time you're saying Boo Boo Doo Boo's in bottom red, the dude could be all the way over at blue base by then. Honestly, I think I'd just be screaming like, kill him, kill him, kill him. <laughs> but instead he answered back, picked up a triple. It does help his team out, but... Man, every time we look at that kill feed, Dave, it's just Tox members firing off left, right, and center. Let's take a look at some of the kills. Snake fight with eight, Royal Two with ten, Lethal with four, Frosty with ten. On the opposing side, it doesn't look good. No, not I even mean, 20 kills effort. on the board. It is a team effort, though, so you would expect across the board all these players doing well, and at the same time, too, for Envious. They should all be doing poorly for the most part. I mean, Boo Boo Doo Boo is standing out the best performance thus far. I think it, that helps with this triple kill during that time. But anytime your team is losing by a significant margin, by over 10 or 15 kills, and you do have some going positive, it's either that player playing out of their mind, or they might be playing inappropriately. They might be baiting a little too hard. They might not be helping with the charges when they need to be. Second time this time round, Snakebite grabs the OS. Goes in favor of Tox. Easy kill from him. Gets the clean up. Royal 2 as well at the moment. This is it. This is just kind of ticking this one down. 16 kill lead at the 720 remaining mark. I've no idea. I mean, what do you do to get out of this? It's re regrets are very. It's a, it's a much smaller map than the you know some of the other ones that we play in Halo 5. It just kind of feels like Tox have got their number red every time they go down. They're already set up to accept the next wave of spawns. Yes, it's it's really tough for Envious to pull out of the situation, but they have to go for a big play. They Ugh. can't just expect to play this one slow and come out ahead. It's okay to play slow mem momentarily to get a couple kills, but after that, you have to keep your man advantage the entire time, just charging across the map, making sure that Tox does not get all four up and that they can't coordinate a push together. What a beating we are seeing. But there's still signs of life, Boo Boo. Picks up a double. That brings them within at least 23. Hopefully we don't see a stake. Trippy answers onto Royal 2 as well. 24 to 40. That's five kills in a row now they've got. So they need to keep playing like this. Five unanswered kills is a big, can be a big swing to your momentum. It's supposed back down into tunnel. This player may challenge. Yes, he does. They add another one and now, Dave, they are only nine kills away. Make that eight from the grand finals. Snakebite happy to trade in those sort of situations. Look at these players just yeah. meleeing back and forth. Snakebite trading with Pistola. Frosty trading with Zane. They're going to trade all the way to the finals here. Envious need to do something crazy, but I'm not sure if they can. I mean, there's a new overshield coming up in 10 seconds, but even if they get that, they're still down by so much. I believe in miracles. But I don't know if this even needs a miracle to be honest with you. It would need. I believe in miracles, and I'm not even sure if this one can be done, Sims. <laughs> oh. Four more kills make that three. Tox, they are playing absolutely lights out Halo 5. This is what we want to see. This is one of the best teams in the world. We expected them to be in a grand final scenario. They only need one more kill to solidify that reality. Five minutes to do it. Everybody just needs to charge. They need to stick another one on the board. That play is there. Snake bites in the corner. Victory comes across the screen. Ladies and gentlemen, you wouldn't have it any other way. Tox versus Splice for the Halo World Championship 2018 title. $500,000 is on the line in this next best of seven. Envious came so close, but when it came to that final game, they fell so short. That has to be disheartening.
However, Envious have given us such a great run in this tournament. Barely taking out Reciprocity in their previous series. Taking Tox to game number seven. Just a phenomenal run here from Envious in this 2018 Halo World Championship event. I didn't, uh, you know, I, I don't want to be disrespectful in any way, shape or form, but I didn't really expect Envious to be able to push them that hard. You know, and this kind of, it states how close Halo 5 is now in terms of these teams. Obviously, we've already seen a game, that's the second time now that we've seen a best of seven coming out of two teams back to back. Envious back to back. BO7s, Game 7s, you know, and this kind of speaks volumes what's happening in Halo 5. Reciprocity is stepping up, Envious is stepping up, Tox, they now have to step up. They are now staring down their biggest challenge of a lifetime. They want to do the three-peat. Can we see it happen? <sighs> it's going to be a good one. Make sure you stay with us. For now, though, we're going to break down that last game. Golden Boy, gentlemen at the desk, what do you think of that one? Thank you so much, Sims and Walshy, for the exquisite casting there, as well as what a what an elimination final. Honestly, going all the way to Game Seven, uh, which is the only way that you would want that one to go. Uh, but Tox find themselves in familiar territory in the Grand Finals at the Halo World Championship, which, by the way, I do want to say is an achievement unto itself. Three times in a row. They have made it to the Halo World Championship Grand Finals, uh, but the, I mean, the, the tone is very different this time around. So uh, we, you know, got to just jump into uh, some of the replays here and I guess just talk about the, the broader match as a whole. Uh, so Rig Strongholds was our first game here, gentlemen, and I guess, you know, really it was Talks showing that they, they were not really knocked down a peg from that matchup, Lethal, against Splice. So um, an impressive showing from them closing that out 173. Definitely, because with Rig Strongholds, it's an extremely difficult game type to try and hold certain areas and just have control of the map. But it depends what kind of team you are. And with Tox themselves, considering they're extremely aggressive and play that map so much, but also Frosty's one of those star players on that game type because it's not because of his power up control or just that as well, but it's also because of the fact that he always holds Tower 2 and Whitehall so well and so efficiently. But the main thing is, is the fact that you don't really need too much information. Because it's such a small map, it's quite easy to diverse the, uh, the spawn grids. But we've always seen Tox on these stronghold game types play so well. So it didn't surprise me they got off to a great start. Then this was the true Slayer game, which Envy was able to bounce back, Wonder Boy. And then that's when we knew we were in for a series. Yeah. The biggest takeaway from this entire series, in my opinion, Golden Boy, is the fact that Envious, they are a championship caliber team that has the potential to win a tournament. We said it just before we came on air. Yep. Clutch said it himself. This is yep. a team that is pushing other top four teams to game sevens. This is their second best of seven series today that went to a game seven. But it's I, just lacking that little bit of quality, isn't it? Just to break into that top two. I think this NV roster definitely has their own thing. They have their own play style. Like we said, you hear the commentators state that they slow the game down. Splice and Tox always play at this super fast pace, but Envy plays an entirely different style of Halo 5, and it really, it, it's, it really throws the other top teams off, and it makes the, it takes them off their game. Envy does a lot of unorthodox things throughout their entire. Uh, Entire There's just the play entire style match, in their yeah, meta. Yeah, yeah. Like, they don't play yeah. to the meta of Halo 5. They're kind of creating their own meta, and I really have liked what I've seen through them this weekend. I want them to keep their heads up. I know they just got done losing this game five or game seven. I'm sorry, but they really impressed me. They need to keep at it and just adjust their play style a little bit, and they'll find themselves in another this grand team, finals. This team is so good, Envy. Honestly, they uh, you know. And they're time young. and time again. And yeah, exactly. And they're young. Uh, you know, I mean, pistola has been competing for such a long time, but let's not forget, he's young too, right? right. Like he, he has plenty years of Halo left to play, if I'm being honest, uh, and I, that I would want to see him play as well because, you know, it's Pistola. You wouldn't want to see the wizard continue to do his magic. Uh, but now, as we look to Plaza Slayer again, Envy winning the Slayer yet again, 50-37.
And that's what I don't get as well, because Tox were in a really great spot at one point, especially here when he had to snipe early. I've been up by like a good few kills, but the thing is though, Envy's survival and their ability to do so is next to none. Now, we've seen Spies previously where I've said it before, they're like Halo gymnasts when it comes to actually holding different areas and trying to get away from little situations. But Pistola is still, even at the age of 26, shows that individual ability to get out of any scenario. Because I always feel like with Halo 5, it's extremely easy to trade off another player if they're weak in any way. But I think now, players are starting to realize different ways to stop those trade-offs happening so they can stay alive and continue the battle for wherever the objective is coming. This game six really stuck out to me. I knew T Tox had their backs to the wall. They couldn't lose another game. They had to win two straight. And they go on Truth Flag, a game type that they haven't even scored a flag on that I've seen on the main stage yet throughout this weekend. And Tox comes out and they play this game type almost to perfection. I love the entire way they played it. They switched flag runners there to get the flag going. This was the first game I've seen Tox dominate power up and power weapon control. Yeah. And then they carried it onto this Regret Slayer. They're going to have to do that against Spice. I, I'm tired of watching Spice get everything and just that's when they roll with it. That's when Spice beats you 100 to 8 because they get the first overshield and then it snowballs to the second, the third, the fourth and those rock, those overshields, they transfer to rockets and they... Uh, it's just overwhelming. But here's times. the thing. As, we, as we've looked at these games and, and throughout the entirety of the Halo World Championship Tour, from Orlando to Columbus to here in Seattle, Splice, it, they're not just getting it. They're taking it. They are taking it from their opponents. Non-stop, Wonder Boy. You, it's almost as if like you, you want to try and stop them. You want to try and prevent them from, from, There's from taking power-ups and power weapons. Yeah. But you can't. You can't. And it's coming from a brand of Halo that I don't think we've seen, and it comes from that practice regiment that they employ, right? The money twos, playing two versus twos, just allows them, as Clutch says, to get those overshields, to get the power weapons, because they're bodying up. They are using the body system to win team fights around those key areas of the map at key times. And what do you do? I mean, I, I still, to this day, don't have an answer. No one else here in the, in the Halo Championship series has an answer. And, it's, it's a scary round of Halo. I keep saying scary when I refer to Spice, but it really is because the way they play two versus twos and the way it translates into four versus four gameplay is like nothing I've ever seen in Halo. I, I think put two v twos. In, sorry, sorry, uh, Biden, but uh, with two v twos in general, like um, especially in the Halo two days, when uh, back in Europe, we'd find it really hard to get much practice. So, literally, we would play against Type Z or Pay X or in these two v twos at like three o'clock in the morning, these online tournaments, just to at least help us us progress. But I never thought that. Fair enough, you can help bait and switch a lot better in those 2v2 environments with different players on your team. But maybe, I don't know if they've proved it or not, but I could tell you were smirking because you keep thinking that, you know, it can't be true. Because I don't think it is. I still think they still scrim I talked to them the in the back just a little while ago. And they was, still said it. I was sitting down with them, you know, those uh, captains of personality known as Splice. And uh, we were talking about, you know, their practice and shot. And I was like, hey, lethal, which, by the way, you thought I was talking about TJ. Bless his soul. I Does, doesn't know, <laughs> doesn't, just doesn't know the legend that sits to my left here. Um, but uh, he was just like, uh, he was like, no, like, we, you know, that's just what we do. Like, we don't, we don't have a secret practice thing. We just do the 2v2 thing, or uh, in the case of what Shotzi said, like leading up to the event, didn't put uh, a lot of time into it. But I don't think it's because for lack of caring. I think it's something we had talked about a few times now. I think it's just how far can they possibly push themselves in the current state of the game and the current competition that is uh, at hand. And every single time we think a team is going to take it to Splice, they out of nowhere just Flip the switch. I mean, you, yeah. guys, you guys don't believe it, but I honestly do. The way they play the game, um, really, you can see the little things that they do in two versus twos. If, if anyone's seen Shotzi stream when they're playing money twos, you can see a lot of the same kind of fundamentals they employ in those kind of streams in their gameplay here in professional level level gameplay. And it comes down to how much Halo these guys have played and how many four versus four games they have played. At what point does you playing four versus four over and over just kind of stagnate your practice? You're, you're yeah. starting to find out other ways to improve your team, and, and apparently two versus twos is one of them. Yeah, it's just uh, very impressive. And, uh, you know, Splice, they are the current, uh, you know, I would say,